Hi, Sophie. Ciao. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. What about you? Uh, good, good. Say Tom. <laughs> Where are you in this moment? Uh, you know, Federica, the situation is so unreal. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I am staying safe at home, like everybody, in a kind of enclosure. How are you living the lockdown? Uh, I think that um, it's definitely a lesson for us. Because uh, we in fashion was a bit out of joint. And uh, I'm still wondering where were we running no stop? Um, I think that this lockdown allowed us to reshape our perspective, our, our priority. In a life in which everything seems dramatically mandatory, And um, about it, I really appreciated uh, yesterday an article of Tim Blanks on Business of Fashion, where it focuses on the need of talking openly to each other. Yeah. Something so simple, but still so new, since fashion has traditionally been an industry of secret. And yeah. the virus highlighted the nonsense behind this behavior. Fashion calendars, timing, planning, quantities. It had all become a nonsense, and despite a great advertising campaign and public statement about uh, what I can call the most fashionable terms of the 21st century, sustainability and inclusion, everything was so unsustainable and exclusive. So yeah. I think it's time to tell the truth and at least try to avoid some mistakes. Obviously, independent designer, we're going to be uh, it artist. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, um, no, it's true. It's totally true. Yeah. We have to reset, uh, yeah, rewind and reset uh, everything. And I think that we should listen to uh, Pop Francis' suggestion about this when he said, we are all on the same boat. And I think no company will survive uh, this coronavirus alone. But yeah. thankfully, we can count on so many beautiful souls and fashion institutions as uh, Miss Aramaino, that you know very well, yeah. and the Camera Moda Fashion Trust, and their initiative Together for Tomorrow, a very, very important initiative. I suggest to all the followers to go and check in order to support immediately, immediately after our conversation, yeah. uh, an initiative with whom they are greatly supporting the new generation of Italian designer and small business, actually helping us trying not to sink. I think that they are actually showing that future is about collaboration, not competition. Yes, totally right. I totally agree with you. So Stella, we have some questions for you. Uh, let's start. Um, where does the need to put forth multiculturalism comes from? It comes from, I can say, from two different reasons or better, two different seats. Um, An emotional seed. First, for me, it has begun as a personal necessity. You know, born in Italy of the early 80s and struggling being so diverse from my fellow citizen has motivated me to find a way to show people not to be afraid of different cultures and colors, but instead to see them as opportunities to grow better together. And um, I know that I'm a fashion designer, so I know that it may sound a bit paradoxical, but I don't use fashion with an aesthetic purpose, but as a tool to fight against any cultural segregation. The beauty of fashion has no borders. You accept beauty a priori, without prejudices. This allows me to talk through fashion without preconceived opinions, just beauty. You, you have to think that my, I have my Creole heritage into, in, uh, and I have two opposite elements, no? One side, first white republic, one, the other side, first black republic in the world. And they are blended together. I think that this marriage of opposites, culture, um, creates a new hybrid, which I've always considered during my childhood a total, a total disadvantage. And um, uh, it took me a long, long time to change my mind. But thanks to many friends, mentors, role model, and obviously fashion, which has been my therapy, I can say it. I discovered the precious uniqueness of being diverse, conveying a new concept of multiculturalism applied to fashion, which promotes cultural crossover without ever compromising one's own identity. You said uh, two reasons. And the second reason, so? Uh, the second one, yeah. the need to, uh, to put forth and preserve 
the multiculturalism inherent in these words come for me from the fact that I've always had to. My mother comes from Italy and my father from Italy. I was born in Rome, but I spent few years in Italy and I was mortified that such a great country, believe me, uh, Haiti is such a beautiful and amazing country. And it is known just for some wrong reason or some bad reasons like earthquake, obviously, extreme poverty, charity action. But believe me, after the immediate emergency cases, help should come uh, for this country is in a totally different form in order to build a long-term action, considering that this population has so many cultural resources which would allow them to rise up again on their feet without the need of charity action. What they need is someone who decides to believe in their capacity and give them the opportunity to work, putting in place their own skill. This kind of initiative would also attract the new local generation to their ancestral artisanal skill in danger of extinction and assure continuity. When the new generation, uh, um, this is something that I, I can see everywhere I go, when the new gener generation see through the media, the result and the response to their uh, traditional work, it gives them an incentive to keep that tradition alive. This should be the power of fashion, I think. This is acknowledgement of fashion's potential as a cultural activity to provide significant opportunities for decent work for men and women around the world. I think this should be the main fashion message, main fashion goal, a fashion which permits in the dignity of work as a crucial element at any latitude, remembering that human sustainability sure. should come always first. Yeah, sure, that's true, it's fantastic, yeah. Uh, you have founded and invented the Laboratorio delle Nazioni. What is about? And as far as I understood, which is not just one collection, is it right? No. Uh, the Laboratorio delle Nazioni, and I keep the Italian words for it, the title, yeah. title represent a business model and a sustainable development platform. And it focuses on what occurs when fashion becomes a tool for a cooperative international development. Um, through missions on the field, each collection is the result of the construction of a the cultural bridge between yep. Italian design and the artisan of a low-income country at each different season, such as Haiti, Burkina Faso, Mali, Pakistan, and others in South America, Africa, and, and Asia. I go on the field, maybe I should explain it a bit, uh, what, uh, what a mission, because it's, yeah. it may sound a strange word for the fashion world, but I should explain what a mission consists. I go on the field um, and uh, after a first period of meeting and researches of um, the various indigenous skills, many of which are dying out. This is important yeah. to underline. I start studying together with local artisans how to de uh, develop a product, fashion textile or accessory, combining the host country's traditional craftsmanship with the well-known Italian design and savoir-faire, an exchange of know-how which show um, our cultural heritages in uh, this case have a major impact on development and contributes to reduce a lack of opportunities. Because when we talk about poverty, that we must, uh, and one of the most biggest lack that I found is the lack of opportunities. So that's why I tried to build this international cooperation which aim to promote cultural heritage as a driver of sustainable development. This and you have to think that the incredible thing about Laboratorio di Nazioni is that despite the thousands of miles of distance that may lie between them, countless ends of women artisans in different countries, and uh, in Haiti, in Pakistan, in, uh, in, in, in Italy, obviously, work together in this ideal laboratory of nation with the common goal of caring and preserving an endangered global cultural heritage. In, and in so doing, these women are building their own economic autonomy, preserving their own tradition, and at the same time, gaining a really small seat at the global market table. Yeah. We could see something in your uh, wonderful uh, video uh, yeah, for the Pakistan. Absolutely, the video of the, the footage, the footage of the yeah, Pakistan yeah. mission. And uh, it's really important. That's why before every fashion show, 
I show the footage of the mission because you see, you know, when you see the beautiful quotes on the catwalk and uh, uh, then you discover that the story behind the quotes, it's even more beautiful than the quotes itself. So it's really important for me that people understand who have worked, which is the story and which is the long trip that this quotes uh, made to reach the the prestigious Milan Fashion Week yeah. and this prestigious prestigious international catwalk. Yeah, and we would like to know also about your ideal objective. Uh, first of all, I would like my objective to be effective rather than ideal. But uh, the Laboratorio delle Nazioni has the local to global objective to oppose a welfareism that has proved so far to be inefficient. A goal of uh, integrationist, it's a bit difficult word, <laughs> contamination, which um, promotes a cultural crossover in which no identity is ever negotiated, no charity, but uh, serious work and cooperation. So an ideal laboratory of nation with permits on the dignity of work, uh, as I said, at any, at any latitude. So this mission is for me a voluntary declaration and the reflection of my personal multicultural DNA translated into our style, let's say, uh, as well as into a business model of sustainable development. I hope and uh, I'm working for that. And tell us about uh, something about your last mission, please. Last mission? Uh, my last mission has been uh, my ninth mission. And yeah. I have the chance to discover the destination of this mission thanks to the Pakistan Trade Development Authority, Secretary uh, Sukera, and um, Director of the United Nations and Industrial Development Organization Italy, and uh, a wonderful, unique woman of 22 years old. She's a whole um, a warrior woman to me. Her name is Karishma Ali. I've worked with the reality of an emerging Pakistan, collaborating on the ground with some exceptional minority communities. Um, you have to think that these communities are at risk of extinction. This oh. includes the Kalash people, located oh. in one of the most remote areas of the world, an isolated valley. Uh, Very good. Thousand meters of in the, in the Chitra region, in the border province northeast of Pakistan, very uh, next to the Afghanistan border. Wow. You have to think that Kalash are an ancient population who hold a unique heritage in their background. For this reason, the government has provided them with an extraordinary amount of safety, so they are really protected, not to uh, lose this incredible heritage for, uh, that, they, that they have, that they keep. You think that for the first time in history, uh, these women, the Kalash women, have embroidered their traditional motif for an international audience uh, through the project Laboratorio delle Nazioni. And these broad embroideries have left the Kalash valleys, valleys for the very first time. Wow. So I was really proud of it. Yeah, but you are so, really happy. Happy. Yeah. And they uh, enable the world to partake in this uh, women empowering pet. And I've been lucky, I have to say, I've been lucky enough to, be, to meet visionary realities as Yux, the e-commerce platform that has accepted such a challenge with me of working with a community that have never produced embroideries for anyone wow. uh, outside, the, outside their village and in such a remote place. But uh, as I say, the beauty of this collection is in the story behind it. And the Yux team has been able to take this leap with me. And they even put the heart before uh, the numbers. And so I'm really grateful. You know, when it's about mission, I'm going around and uh, knocking on various doors to ask for help because that's what you need. You need someone who could believe in this kind of project. And uh, when you find someone who responds, when you find someone who is, uh, who is available to collaborate immediately without even knowing the, or seeing the product, but just trusting these communities, trusting these, these women, uh, it makes a real change. And um, really, I think that I'm really lucky. Wow. So, no, this is a great. You are really a great woman. Uh, <laughs> but, yes, it's true, really. Uh, you're the first Italian black fashion designer. Have you ever faced discrimination? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Um, 
that's why on the last four winter uh, collection, I've conceived uh, Italian Sim Becoming. It is a social awareness project in which the new multicultural Italy is highlighted through the portraits of 20 beautiful women. Italian beyond any prejudice, Italian beyond every shade of skin tone and regardless of physical characteristics or beliefs. And uh, I think that the point at which we could decide whether or not to deal with others different from us has already passed. The others has, are already part of us and I'm here to prove it. <laughs> and uh, as an Italian black designer, I, I was facing a story that I unfortunately know all too well and I cannot remain silent and phantom holding a fashion show as if nothing serious was, uh, was happening. And I love to thank uh, all, all the people that have responded, have responded to my, um, when I asked for some help, like Italian government for being so sensitive to help and support me through the National Office Against Racial Discrimination of the Presidenza del Consiglio dei Ministri that I don't know how to translate for the uh, genuine uh, commitment. Uh, yeah. So these projects aim to portray these women not as victims, but as active agents of a change yeah. that is already well underway. So ready or not, we are proudly represent the new Italy and uh, I hope we are evolving and finally turning a statement of inclusion on actually being inclusive with concrete yeah. facts because what we and our kids still facing are concrete attacks and verbal, physical, and we need concrete reaction to, uh, to solve this problem, this sure. kind of problem. Yeah, absolutely. You're an independent brand. How did you reach as a speaker international stages as the United Nations, the European Commission, considering that you have also been highlighted by the New York Times as the most convincing of all new generation designers in Milan. Yeah, last, last year. Uh, you know what, Frederica, if I have to think, I have to say that uh, nothing that I've done so far would have ever been possible without the fundamental contribution of giants of Italian fashion. Uh, giants who decided to trust in my vision and decided to believe in my project, my mission, uh, which is an existing and tangible ethical work, which is uh, obviously still not remunerative, but at the yeah. moment, but hopefully it will be one day. If we were, if we all work together on et in this ethical way, we will reach some also economic result. But at the moment, it's, it's a bit uh, complicated. And I think that these giants uh, have decided to give me a non-reimbursable trust. And I cannot uh, not, um, tell the name of some angels which helped me, uh, help me to um, turn my vision in a, in a real, in a concrete world. Mrs. Uh, Franca Sozzani. Uh, Mr. Um, uh, Armani, Sara Maino, as I said, Vogue Italy and Vogue International, Italian, the president of Italian Chamber of Fashion, the city of Milan. You know, Federica, they didn't offer me a party or a cocktail, but the concrete opportunity yeah. to show my work to the world. And I'll be grateful forever. We should all have the same opportunities. And that's what some, let's call them gatekeepers, should understand. Yeah, no, it's uh, amazing, yeah. And we are really honored that uh, our first edition of the uh, Ethical and Sustainable Award in 2016 for the Monte Carlo Fashion Week uh, was given, uh, we decided to give to you and you came in Monaco and we really had the honor to have you. Uh, for the it was, it was first my really pleasure. pleasure. Yeah. It was my really pleasure yeah. and I, uh, I really appreciate your commitment and uh, that which attracts many, many different designers from all over the world. We should keep doing, keep working this way and uh, hopefully what sometimes may appear uh, just a f marketing flag will definitely turn into something real, something transparent 
and uh, working together, we will make a change. And as I said at the beginning, um, this, this virus, I think it, it came for one specific reason, no? When we say everything was so unsustainable. So we have to take this change to um, change and become something better from what we, uh, we were before. Yes. We know that we, to, be, to do that, you, you know, to be honest, you, you also have to tell the truth, tell everything. You have to also to ac accept to uh, earn less money, but we will do less, but better. We yes. do uh, better with uh, what we have right here, right now, as I do with my artisans. When I call them during the, the second day of uh, lockdown, for me, it's impossible to stay at home without working. I'm so used to, to travel to work. So I decide immediately to call them and uh, propose them to work on this new um, collection that burn from uh, a reality we, where we will use, we are using just what we have right yeah. here, right now. And uh, it's our creativity. We are Italian. Our creativity will save us as it has always done. Yeah. So I'm, I really trust. I really trust in our creative DNA. Anyway, you know that um, in this moment, uh, since nobody knows where we are going, yeah. Because nobody has ever been there, so uh, I think we should uh, start to think out. We can creatively uh, start over, start again. Yeah. Yes, very uh, important message. Yeah. So it's really an honor to have you here. Uh, if you'd like to say something else or, uh, yeah. Because we consider you like, um, yeah, the feeling is that uh, you are the, the mother of the sustainability. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for the Italian designer, yeah? <laughs> no, no, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, yes. not, I'm not the mother. As I say, nothing of it would, be ever been, uh, would ever been possible. So uh, I, uh, I, think, I think that... Uh, as uh, the article said, it's now is not about uh, who will come out of this better, who will learn more. It's about coming out better and well in a, in a total different, I hope, total different shape with a, in a, with a different state of mind. And I think with a little help of our friends, of our giants, uh, friends, we are talking about Italy, yeah. the giants of fashion, of international fashion. Sure. Uh, we will, we teach the world uh, more than once how to rebuild, how to stand up again from tragedies, you know? That's our history. And uh, we will do it one more time together. We will do it one more time. I really um, believe it. I really mm, believe that it will be a great, great opportunity. So anyway, we don't know because, you know, that we keep asking. At the beginning, I was asking to everybody where we were going, what we will be, what will, uh, will happen. And then at a certain point, I've stopped asking directions about where we will go, or what will it happen, since no one in the planet Earth has never been there, has never been where we are going. So what I personally can do is to create culture, culture business and uh, keep working with all my artisans in Italy and abroad because that's what has touched me and when I've called uh, the women which are working on the next mission that uh, it's a country that I haven't been able to go because all the uh, all the airports have closed all the borders have been closed so when I called them and they send me their work I thought they would stop no and instead, they send me their work. That's why they send me the work. They work the second day of the lockdown. That's why the second day of lockdown, I say, 
if they keep working in their condition, which yeah. are not mine, because I'm at home, safe, I can, sure. oh, I can eat twice a day, and they yeah. work in a totally different condition. They keep working. And uh, I said, mm, that means that I can't stop. So wow. I will do less, but better. Um, and we have to do it also to turn fashion production and supply chain in a value chain. Yeah. And, you know, when you will dress, when you will wear their clothes, and when I'll tell you the story, or they will tell you the story the, the, uh, behind it, uh, these words, I think that you will consider clothes in a totally different way, a le less frivolous, let's say. And you, um, you will take care. That's something really important for me. Yeah. In a moment where we dress and we change dress clothes every day or we wear new collection and everything goes too fast everything goes in a kind of bulimic no way uh i believe that when you wear uh, their clothes uh, you stop you think and you take care of it because taking care of it you're taking care of them you're taking care of a cultural of a international worldwide heritage which is our heritage and all these women are working together to preserve it so we have to do our part not buying as a hundred clothes a day or something that we will never even wear but less and better i really yeah. believe it and i really hope it yeah uh, we have a question. Uh, yeah, we have some question. And uh, one of these is what is uh, sustainability to you? But I think that you already answered because it was uh, what you For me, sustainability think, is just uh, good sense. Please. It's not yeah. other than having good sense. You don't have to uh, be incredible, smart, or studying. The, you can, because, you know, they are building a kind of uh, uh, bureaucracy even around sustainability and ethics about the products of about everything and you know when you go in countries where people are struggling to uh, gain to hit it, everything's changed yeah. priorities change so they need to work there are and they can work we should stop thinking that we have to uh, keep doing a lot of charity, okay, keep feeding them. There are people who are used to, um, to work, to provide to their own uh, life, to their kids. So we just need cooperation instead of welfareism. It's changed a lot because um, feeding something and working with some, feeding someone or working with someone, it's, they are two opposite, um, two opposite conception. So let's work together. That's what they ask. What, that's what all the women that I've met asking. That's what they are ready to do. They're ready to work. They didn't stop. They didn't stop for coronavirus. They didn't stop for anything. They are there with their, with their kids. And they are working, putting all their goodwill and all their energy in uh, their, the clothes, the embroidery they are, they are realizing. So thank you for, so much for um, the conversation. Thank you for the message, <laughs> all the messages that you gave. And, thank you for having me. Yeah, and we hope to have you here in person yeah, next year, <laughs> or soon, to see you soon. And I hope yeah. that my artisan will come with me, so we will yeah. have the chance to, to meet these yeah. wonderful, these amazing women. Yeah. yeah. So great. Thank you so much, Stella. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, Federica. Yeah. And I say in Italian, buon lavoro. Bravissima. Grazie, grazie yeah. Federica, buon lavoro. Ciao. Bye. Thank you. Ciao, ciao.